This video is sponsored by the Pig Dove Licking Society. It's random lift tours, France, Belgium, Netherlands, mad cycling, camping adventure. It's random lift tour time. And here I am at Gillingham Station, about to get on the train down to Dover. And along we go to the first lifts. Oh dear. So nice to see this random lift tour's got off to a good start. What a total load of shit. So then on the Electro Star, I go down to Dover. And here I am at Dover Docks. And just look at this awesome, run down, rotty, 60s building. But something is missing on the left. The departures building. It's gone. They've pulled it down. Really odd, probably because there's hardly any foot passengers go on the ferries from here. But it's just so odd. This whole place is weird. And as well as this, there's also a car park around the back. That's this long, spooky passage to get to it. I don't even know what's happened to this car park. But at least the Rails building and the Groddy car park are still here. So long we go into the lift. And it is a generic hydraulic lift. But in versus generic, it is quite spooky and quite fun. And the top floor has been locked off. They've taken one of those big u husbands and replaced it with a key switch. It is so odd they've completely locked off the entire top floor. But we all know there is a way. So then open up the lift and yes there's a light on top and turn it on and where's the light switch? I can't turn on the light again. Another lift with no way to turn on the lights. I don't believe it. So along we go to the other lift here. This lift's in the original shaft from the 60s. The lift's been replaced to a generic but at least this one is traction and this lift does look quite spooky. So then open it up and yes there is a light. So then verify inspection mode and the indicator just shows the floor it's on. There's less to controls. It's supposed to show scrolling message saying lift out of service. Something doesn't seem right here. So can I do this or is it not safe? Right, let's verify the stop button and the stop button is verified which means I won't be able to control so let's try this. Will this lift move? Yes, it does. Up I go. Here I am on for the restricted top floor of this car park and most of all I'm not supposed to be up here even more reason to do it just look at this just look at this bloody area where the lift comes out and over here we can see a really good view of the boats and my boat is the boat on the left and the boat's due to go soon I'm gonna be late quickly get on the bike and just quickly get to the boat and on the bike is really weird because you cycle around all of the grotty roadways and it's actually cheaper if you have a bike with you because if you turn up as a foot passenger it's actually really expensive going on the bike to have a bike with you it's just 20 pounds each way so odd at having a bike reduces the fare by over a half and if you have a bike you, you count as a vehicle meaning you cycle around the grotty roads rather than go on the bus this is so strange cycling around this area this feels so odd and here I am waiting there on the boat and bikes and motorbikes are first on the boat first off which is really awesome so and here I am on the boat and it's really fun cycling onto a boat very different to driving on and it's so odd bit of fun on a boat on my bike and no cars this is so weird and close the door and let's go film some lifts I've actually been on this boat not long ago which is a bit disappointed I'm back on the same boat but last time I missed the lift which is the lorry driver's lift because non-stop up to the lorry driver's restaurant area. This is the last lift. Let's ride it. Right, 
expect a very good crossing with an approximate crossing time of 40 hours. Now please observe all those parking signs and pay particular attention to the following. It's a lorry driver's lift which is lights. That's a very interesting lift. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome on board this DFDS Seaway sailing to Dunkirk. The vessel is now ready to depart. And now we've got a long two for red lift. It's a red Lutz lift. That's really interesting to do this. And now we go along to the service lift, which is locked off. But hey, I can open it up with triangle key. And just as I opened it up, one of the staff came down the stairs and almost saw me. I almost got caught. Yeah, that was not good. So now we go on to the next lift, which is the green lift. While I was filming this lift down in the car decks, there's a stowaway. And now we're going along to the blue lift. This lift stops at the weird floor 3A, but there's absolutely nothing on this floor. Because there's a turn in the staircase. There's a deck 3 is like an old height can't ride it. So 3A is just like an extra turn in the staircase. But the lift stops there. So weird. It's a blue lights lift with a deck 3 mezzanine button, but the top deck is locked off. And here I am up on floor 6, but I wanted to go to floor 7. For some reason floor 7 staff only in this lift, so across the staff only barrier I go up to deck 7. And there's actually no right rush up there. And now here's the boat leaving Dover. Random lift tours will be back after the break. Stanner. We used to make good lifts. Sometimes there are just things you really don't want to do, such as your brother's wedding. But it is expected of you, so you just end up hoping for something to happen. Well, thanks to 21st Century Lift Services, it will. Because every time you go to one of our lifts, there's a one in two chance you'll get stuck in it. We are High Rise Lift Services, the industry's leading experts in lifts. Our lifts have shocked the industry as they are like no other. They go a whopping quarter of a meter a second and last an astonishing. Two whole years to make sure you get your lift from high up. And now we return to random lift tours and the boat has now arrived in Dunkirk in France. And off the boat I go and the people on the ferry terminal are very unfriendly towards bikes because I don't like bikes for some reason like gets in the way of how I like to run a ferry. They're quite rude here. But anyway, here I am in France and everything in France looks so different to England. That's one of the best bits about going to a foreign place. It's like all of the little details are just used to everywhere. All so different. For example, road signs, the layout of the actual sign is different. The front, just the whole way it looks is so odd. So coming up the ferry terminal, rather than going up the main road, I long go to the little weird back road into the centre of Dunkirk. It's 10 miles into Dunkirk and the little weird background is quite weird it's like it's quite empty no man's land and the longer you go to a oil refinery plant it's like i'm in america rather than france it's such a weird very industrial thing quite interesting to look at very grotty and there's loads of weird signs about such as this one which seems to say car fires are not allowed so you can have a car fire everywhere else in france just not in this area so the longer go past the oil refinery area and there's this really spooky sign saying danger risk of explosions when the light shows really creepy and along I go into Dunkirk one of the real odd things about French roads is they have these equal priority junctions they actually have these all across Europe they just don't have them in the United Kingdom and I'm really not used to them but I think about France is they actually have these on major road intersections there's two large roads crossing each other both with complete equal priority and no traffic lights when I got to these what I wrongly thought was it's a bit like a mini roundabout you give way to the stuff already on the junction so since I'm driving on the right that'd be giving way to stuff on the left but no it's the other way around you're only giving way to stuff on the right which is so alien to me. I've never done anything quite 
like this. So long ago, into the centre of Dunkirk, that I have filmed a lot of lifts here. Dunkirk isn't really that interesting, but here is a lift in one of the shops in Dunkirk. So then, it's now starting to get dark and I want to get along to the Netherlands border before night time. I don't have long left, so I need to go fast. It's another 10 miles to the France-Belgium border where I can then get a tram all the way across to the Belgium-Netherlands border. So then, I've got 10 miles to solve. Right, let's go. And it's getting dark. And a long go to the France-Belgium border crossing. And look at this, this so clearly looks like a classic sort of old style border crossing before all the border controls were removed many years ago. And you've got to see his middle bit of the road. It must have been like a big checkpoint sort of thing here. These buildings next to it all look like buildings to do with the border control. They've all been sold off and all these shops and other stuff now. But really interesting. And now I go along into Belgium. And it is getting very dark now. And the trams don't actually run that late here. I'm going to miss the last tram. Quickly, cycle faster, faster. I'm getting really tired. It's actually quite spooky cycling along roads in a foreign country where everything looks very different and it's getting dark. This is actually quite atmospheric, quite creepy. And along I go along to the deep end for tram stop and it's really dark and tram. And I'm actually not that off the end of the line so I just have to wait a few minutes for the tram to go up and back and while the tram is going up the plop's land I go and do a plop in the woods and it's very dark in the woods. And now I go back to the tram stop, very dark and spooky, very atmospheric waiting for a tram, and here it comes. And on the tram I go. So I'm pretty much cheating, I'm using the tram to bypass the whole of Belgium and all the way across to the Netherlands border. which is just a couple of miles from the Netherlands border and it is now in the middle of the night First let's take a look at Knock train station It is very creepy cycling around this train station in the middle of the night There's not much lighting here, no trains Yeah, very creepy So now I cycle down to the coast and cycle along the coast to almost the Netherlands border. And here I'm at the coast, it's the middle of the night, not many people about. And I'm now leaving the lit area, so I'm now going right into the dark. And long ago to this weird nature reserve, can't see a sodding thing because it's so dark and that's about as far as I can go. So it's now time for me to put up my tent. That's right, I'm not going to any hotels. I'm doing an experiment to see how little amount of money I can spend on a holiday. So I've got a tent, let's put up the tent and I've decided to camp on the beach. So it's very dark, I can barely see what I'm doing, just about managed to put up my tent and what is that sound? It sounds like it's raining outside. It's not. That is the sound of sandhoppers. I had no idea this beach would be completely infestated with them. It's about one o'clock in the morning. The whole beach is swarmed with sandhoppers. They all come up from beneath the sand to feed. Now my tent is in the middle of it. I can feel them all pitter pattering underneath the tent. And the thing that really scares me about them is they jump like a flea with their back legs and sort of spin themselves in an uncontrolled jump. And I was actually quite scared because I didn't know if they bit. I was like inundated amongst them. I opened up the tent a little bit and loads of them just jumped in. It was like the whole beach was a swarm of sandhoppers. But I settled down after a couple of hours. It was a very rough night of sleep, but at least I did manage to get to sleep. Random lift tours will be back after the break. We are Apex Lifts. When we maintain a lift, we 
we put our name over the manufacturer's logo because we're pretty much like a dog scent marking our territory. That's right, we'll come and piss in your lift. But you can't argue with us because we have the royal warrant. We install lifts for the queen because she totally loves it when she gets stuck in our lifts, doesn't she? And when we find an old lift, we always replace it with something that doesn't last as long because we are Apex Lifts. Lift Specialists Limited. Yeah, because we are such specialists. Lift Specialists Limited employs some of the most experienced engineers in the country. Right. The Evans Lifter Lights are the experts in lifts. Generic, generic, generic. And now we return to random lift tours and it's now morning. I wake up after a bad night's sleep but at least I can now see again. And here is my tent on the beach. And here is the beach I've been camping on. Now that it's now light and I can now see what it looks like. And now we go along into the nature reserve. Here's the nature reserve and over there, just look at that statue. That is so creepy. And now we go across the nature reserve and into the Netherlands. Although I'm not entirely sure when I actually entered the Netherlands because there's no sign marking the border. Here I am in the Netherlands and the cycleways over here are just so awesome. I mean the cycleways in Belgium were just amazing. But the Netherlands is even better. There's just cycleways wherever you go. There's hardly a single road without a cycleway in the Netherlands. In fact, in the Netherlands there's less roads without cycleways than there actually are cycleways in England. That is how good it is. It is just amazing. And I long go to Cads and Bard and I long go into a hotel until I'm into the lift there, which is an 80s Otis. It's the 1980s Otis Series 1. That's really nice. And here I am in the town centre of Kazan Bar. Here are the shops and one really amazing thing about this park and everything is that when people go into the shops, they don't even lock up their bikes. And quite a lot of people here don't even lock up their bikes overnight. That is how little the amount of climb is here. It is this amazing, especially if you compare this to where I come from in Chavy Old Gillingham. Everyone in the Netherlands is just so friendly. And now, I now cycle six miles southwards down to Oostburg. And now let's take a look at some of the cycleways. For example, this road here is like just a country road going across this countryside. And it has cycleways each side. To me, this is just amazing there's this many cycleways. But to the people in the Netherlands, this cycleway I'm going on is actually a really crap cycleway. Because what our people in the Netherlands are used to is completely segregated cycleways like this. Not a single car about. This path is just for bikes. This is just amazing. These segregated cycleways go all the way across the country. This is such easy cycling. This is just so amazing that cycleways are this good. And I long ago into Oostburg. And here I am in the town centre of Oostburg. And it's a really nice place. There's loads of little shops about, although there aren't actually any lifts. So I long ago into Oostburg Hospital and into the lifts there, which are some really awesome star lift Rubergs. And I've never actually been this sort of lift before. Let's ride it! It's an awesome Starlift Vuerberg. It has Con M series buttons. Completely different to Con M series. And now we go along into the Star Only Lift. It's an awesome star lift through Berg, which is a staff only lift. But it's really done. And now I can cycle along the Netherlands, and one thing you see a lot in the Netherlands is windmills. And another really interesting thing is these litter bins. It's like just a net where people throw in their litter. And now I can cycling southwards down from Oostburg, along some of these awesome Netherlands roads, and I now go back to the Netherlands Belgian border. And it's not actually that much marking a border, it's literally just this border stone. That's it, that's all there is telling me I've crossed the border. And here I am now across the border, back in Belgium. And now I cycle southwards across Belgium, and I was hoping to go down to Ghent. Although what I didn't realise is this is actually a lot further distance than I thought, 
walk, because looking at the maps, everything looks a lot closer than it actually is. Well, this is the distance it's shown on maps, so it should be obvious how far everything is. But just everything's quite a long way spaced out in this part of Belgium, and I didn't realise how, how far it was. So yeah, I was cycling along for a very, very long way. I got extremely tired. But at least the roads here are really nice and really easy to cycle along. Though there aren't actually cycleways on all the roads over in Belgium, the roads around this part are still really quiet. And it's like I'm cycling along the middle of nowhere. But long come to a little farm. And one thing about this area of France, Belgium, Netherlands, is that there's loads of very small farms about. It's like animals in little pens, and a lot of these animals actually tame like these really cute sheep. And when I went off and left them, I started making loads of protests because I hadn't fed them. And then we go along cycling along Belgium, and you get these little country roads with rows of trees going along. And along I go to this river, and this bit really does look amazing. Just look at this river with rows of trees going along. It's like these long, long boulevards of trees. So now I carry on cycling downwards, and I cycle for a very long way, much further than I actually thought. And I kept cycling, 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 until I was getting extremely tired. And I've cycled over 20 miles now, and I don't usually cycle quite this far. I'm absolutely exhausted. Just when I got to this point, just when I thought, I can't go any further, I was absolutely exhausted. I didn't feel like I could cycle another mile. I just had to give up. It was just too far. I did not realise it was quite that far. So, I'm in the middle of nowhere. I'm completely exhausted. This was not good. So, it was at this point, I decided to cycle westwards to Malgem. So, along my cycle, which was still quite a long way, I think it was almost 10 miles, I did it painfully slowly because my legs completely ached. I cycled along this really, really small little road, and it was a long, long way. And at this point, I was so exhausted, I just collapsed in the middle of nowhere by some cows and here are the cows they're all staring at me they look friendly but when I walked over to them they all ran away so here I am completely exhausted in the middle of nowhere so after an hour I just about managed to carry on cycling I just made it to Malgem and here I am in the town centre so then I'll go to the lift in the town hall which is a really nice listen club MRL let's ride it It's a really nice Mark II futuristic Tyson Krupp MRL. That looks so different. in this town for another couple of hours. I went to McDonald's and after getting a bit more energy, I decided to carry on cycling. So I carried on westwards towards a place where I'm not entirely sure how you pronounce it, because the English version of this place is somehow called Bruges. But what's odd about this place is also the version of this by the sea, which is Zeebrugge, meaning that this town is basically Landbrugge. So I started cycling along here. One interesting thing was this goose farm. There were loads of baby geese, which are really cute. And now it's now starting to get dark, and I'm now completely exhausted because I've cycled 40 miles today. I am so exhausted now. So I long ago into I would, but there is a problem, which is I don't want anyone to come across my tent while I'm going to sleep in the middle of the night. I'm just really scared of picking up my tent somewhere and it being discovered. Last night on the beach, it was like middle of nowhere, but here it's like loads of people about. So I walked around this bit of wood for a while, trying to see if there's any bits of it where no one went. But I found this path where no one was walking, because this path goes into a closed area of the wood. I did think about actually picking up my tent in the closed area. I'm very glad I didn't, because it was closed for a reason. So I put up my tent here on this path where I could hear quite a few people about, but when it went completely dark, there was no one about, there was no reason anyone would have to come up here so I thought I wouldn't get deserved in the middle of the night. Let's just listen to what sounds we can hear. And I now went to sleep and at 3 o'clock in the morning I got woken up by the sound of a lorry and it sounded very close like I was coming down the path where my tent was. I panicked, woke up, grew out the tent to see a lorry was actually in the closed part of the wood and it was dumping soil. So this lorry was making a load of noise at 3 o'clock in the morning. Why are they doing work at this time of night? The only reason I can think of is that it must be soil being dumped from a metro system because when underground train tunnels are dug and the soil has to be removed literally as it comes out, there can't be any 
any delays. Meaning, if you want the sword, do landscape and I'll give you the sword for free. But they'll deliver it whenever they deliver it. And when they do deliver it, they have to deliver it there and then. You have to have the space available where you want the sword to be put. And now, it's now morning. And the diggers come and started rearranging the sword that's been dumped in the middle of the night. And you can see the workmen now working on it. So then, I've now woken up as soon as it gets light before any people come along and see my tent. And now I go along into Bridge and along to this weird ticking traffic line. Now that is weird. I've never seen anything quite like that before. And now it's spilling bridge time. And let's take a look at some of the cycleways in Belgium. As well as having completely dedicated cycleways, they also have cycleways where cycle on each side of the road and you cycle on the correct side for which way you're going. Unless you can see this bit of video, I'm cycling the wrong way. And these cycleways are this because when a car wants to turn right into a side road, it's a cutting across you. The cars actually have to stop and give way to you. Now that is just amazing. And now, while well, Evil Al has gone and got himself stuck in some lift doors, I go off and film the lifts in Bruges. And now to the first lift, which is a nice 90s visit. It's a nice 1980s Tyson. And yes, that's fair to old lips. And now to the next lift, which is the 90s fist, except this one is hydraulic! Boring! So now we go to the next lift, which are some Gen 2s. Let's open up the logic cabinet and I can't read the instructions because they're not in English but luckily I still know how to do this. Put it into engineer mode and drive it downwards into precision. And let's open it up. And where's the light switch? Once again, no light switch. The light switch must be down in the pit which I can't open up down there because it's too busy. <sighs> Replace it with generic. Generic. And now we go along to the next lift, which has some nice detail discs down to an underground car park. It's a nice fourth generation ECHA disc with KSS 140 fixtures. This lift can go down to the underground <laughs> car park. <laughs> Now, there's quite a few crap lifts here, but let's just cut out all of this and move straight on to the awesome lifts, such as this old Otis. Now, this is this completely epic. Just take a look at this. It's an epic old Otis lift that looks really awesome. It's just in a shop with some fashionable items. I long to an awesome inner doorless lift in a hotel. It's an old and awesome inner doorless lift in a hotel. This looks really awesome.
And now it's seesaw bridge time. Now this bridge is really weird and really amazing. For the bridge to raise, the whole bridge literally tilts like a seesaw. I've never seen anything quite like this. That is quite amazing. And now we go along to a totally awesome 1960s relay controlled theme lift. Let's ride it! It's a really epic 1960s relay controlled theme lift in a bicycle shop. That looks perfectly awesome. And there are many bikes down in basement too. I really wanted to get to Ghent, so I went to this bike park near the station and I did a separate lift on the station, link is in the description. And after I locked up my bike here, yeah, I got on the train and I went to Ghent. And there were some nice old trams in Ghent and I did a couple of lift tours here. And I did these videos separately and links to these videos are in the description. The next day I then went home again, so I went down to Zeebrugge and got the tram all the way back to France. Then I sunk along back to Dunkirk and whilst fucking around the back roads round the docks, guess what I found? Nor Pas de Calais, the awesome old 80s My Failing Boat, which I never got to go on. This must have some awesome lifts. My Fair Link was shut down. The other two boats got taken over by DFDF, but this boat is now just sitting here out of service. I'm not sure what's going to happen to this boat. Hope I'm not going to scrap it, because I just really want to see these 80s lifts. And now, back go to Dunkirk, and here is the ferry terminal building. And it seems like for once, I might actually be in agreement with Evil Al, as this ferry building has a really nice 80s generic. It might be generic, but back in these days, they were a bit a lot better than they are nowadays, and it's still working, and it's really nice. Replace it with generic. Just because it's an old generic makes no difference. I'll replace my own generics when they're a couple of years old to build with planned obsolescence. I will replace everything with generic. 